Hello everyone and now welcome to game two in this series between Alive versus Crank. You can see Alive spawning here as the blue Terran player on the bottom left hand side of the map. Meanwhile Crank spawning as the red Protoss over here on the top right. Now game one was perhaps a little bit more of a mental game to try and get inside Crank's head. Crank, uh, perhaps a little bit on tilt after Alive just pretty much had his way with him in those opening stages, able to walk in a widow mine inside his opponent's base and get in a very, very quick six kills. Those six kills just started to snowball into um, a little bit of an economic lead for Alive, even though he did sacrifice um, sacrifice his opening and not get his natural expansion nearly as quickly. We'll see what's going to be unraveling here in game two of this matchup. And so far, we don't see anything too out of the ordinary. Now, at this stage, Alive had already gone for a very fast refinery in the previous game. This is obviously not the case this time around. So we may be seeing perhaps a little bit of a faster command center opening here and a, a a rather larger focus on marines let's take a look back in the base here no timing nope it is in fact going to be gas at 13 so it is not going to be a command center after barracks immediately crank on the other hand going for that assimilator not too out of the ordinary i don't think i've seen a nexus after gateway in quite some time especially with the focus on that mothership core mothership core expansions have become pretty much very very common especially in the tvp matchup or pvt matchup a second barracks has been placed down though and this is actually gonna perhaps confuse crank a bit he's gonna see that there is a refinery down he sees that there's three scvs on gas but he doesn't see um the starting of a factory yet rather than looking for that factory i think crank may just assume that there's going to be a factory placed down somewhere when in fact we may be adding on a tech lab here or perhaps even starting a reaper. The probe now looking to get away. There is that reaper there. A second reaper may be joining in on this fight. And it's going to be one lone marine and two reapers against a zealot or two. Crank doing the economic thing here. Trying to get two workers on each of these assimilators here. As the probe now setting up a proxy pylon in a rather curious location. And it is just within sight range of this scouting marine. You can see Alive has spotted that there. He is um, waiting for that pylon to perhaps be completed. And then going to start shooting it down there in just a second. The Reapers have to be very, very careful though. The Marines should be doing target practice against this one pylon. Not quite sure why it hasn't done exactly that. As we are now looking at one probe holding the Zelnaga Tower there. Alright, SCV now looking to get away. This one pylon taking a bit of damage. The Reapers are going to join themselves as we are now looking at the Mothership Core. The Mothership Core coming in across the side. Is the Mothership Core going to perhaps intercept these units here? You can see that the Zealots now trying to run away. The Mothership Core does get off one shot, but the Reapers are rather fast and will be able to get around the map quickly. Jumping up and down those cliffs, the Reapers want to get this one pylon. It looks as though the pylon will get taken down. Yes, there it goes. One poor Marine has been doing target practice all day, and it looks like he will survive just long enough. Meanwhile, back over here, we are looking at more Marines being trained. There is a bunker in position, but Alive doesn't have really much to go on there. There is the attacks. Are we going to perhaps see another Marine jump inside there? Yes, it is going to be double Marines inside that bunker as the Mothership Corps needs to get away. The Stalker, the Zealots now trying to get off some easy shots here. And where is this Marine going to go? The Marine going to uh, perhaps start shooting up at that Mothership Corps. Mothership Corps down to 55 hit points. Meanwhile, the Reapers are battling up against a lot of probes here and able to get in some kills the worker kill count um four to zero so far as the supply depot has been taken down and the second one may even get taken down as well scvs all being brought over marines are now doing some target practice as well scvs need to perhaps repair the supply depot it looks as though another unit will get taken down there stalkers get to soccer gets taken down the supply depot left to burn to a crisp meanwhile the reapers are doing a little bit of a dance back over here so both sides Losing a lot of units early on as the Mothership Corps recalls back home, frightening all of those Reapers who cannot attack air. 
alive was a bit supply blocked as he did end up letting one supply depot burn even though there was a multiple number of SCVs sitting right in position and alive has been really playing with some rather unorthodox openings. Excuse me. Um, we are now looking at a Stargate coming in by Crank. Crank, uh, a rather curious follow-up. I'm wondering if this is going to perhaps um, look to be Phoenixes, Oracles, or Void Rays. All of those ha have their place, and it's more of a guessing game as to what Alive is going to try and go for. He is going very heavy on the bio, getting up three barracks, still does not have a factory as of yet, so he's going to be sitting on mass marines. Meanwhile, coming back over here, the sentries, the probes still wandering around, reapers looking to charge in on the front door, going to find a stalker there, easily challenging those reapers to head back home. Crank with that stargate, what is he going to be training? It is going to be an oracle. Oracle very good at harassing mineral lines as we're now looking at a live, excuse me, looking at a live space here. Um, all right, saturation, 11 over 24 as we are now moving additional units over here back into the natural expansion. So far, things are looking pretty good for both sides. You can see um, we are now looking to go into more Reapers jumping up that cliff. That mothership core is rather low on hit points. And both of these players just doing a little bit of scouting to see who can do more damage. There goes that Reaper though. Hallucinated Phoenix, Oracle now wandering around here. Marines looking to get in position. And if the Marines can capture this Oracle and shoot it down, this would have been a very expensive investment for Crank without much profit. He hasn't really made any use of this Oracle as of yet. It doesn't look like there are any turrets here though. So the Marines need to book it over there and make sure to offer in some protection. All right, there you go. There is some damage. There goes one Marine. There goes another Marine. There goes some more Marines there as the Oracle gets shot down out of the sky before getting any worker kills. Um, I believe those three worker kills were from that earlier fight back over here on the ramp as opposed to that Oracle getting any shots down. Just rather focusing on Marines to try and stick around a bit longer. Alright, let's take a look at what... It's happening next. Crank trying again with that Oracle, hoping that it will pay off a little bit better this time around. We are going into armor upgrades and also going into a robotics bay. That robotics bay generally does indicate Colossus. I cannot imagine warp prism speed being that important as, at this point. As we are looking at one missile turret shooing away that hallucinated Phoenix. Hallucinations do take a bit more damage. And you can see that guy right there just waiting to target down this Oracle. Oracle heading off to the north here. Going to take down one or two units. And now turning off that Pulsar Beam. Wanting to make sure that it can do a little bit of damage a little bit later. Meanwhile, a large contingency force now charging through the front. You can see that the Marines and the Marauders are just holding outside of the range on that Nexus. That Mothership Corps with plenty of energy will be able to hold off all of those Marines for quite some time, especially with a handful of Gateway units ready to receive them. We do have a 10 supply advantage for Alive as he does go into his third command center. Third Command Center being built close to the natural expansion, hoping to lift off and land. As we're looking to shoot down more units here, you can see that the Observer, oh, the Observer just in position to keep track of all these units as we are now looking at, at is that the same photon charge? Yes, it is. Wow, in the time that it takes uh, the Mothership Core to get up, back up to 30 energy, the, that's when the photon charge comes to an end. There is another photon charge there. I don't believe it was necessary. Colossus is now there, and the Colossus could join in on that fight. The Metavax, however, are up on the high ground. There you have it, and the Colossus is going to be working to try and take down all of these units. Photon overcharge, there goes another unit there. Zealots, Marines, and now with that Colossus, all of the Metavax, are they going to try to pull back? It doesn't look that way. The Colossus getting in some free and easy shots 
as the medevacs now looking to fly around the north side there is a, a phoenix there and the phoenix if it was paying attention could have shot down perhaps one if not two of the medevacs here you go there's that phoenix right over there and now gonna make its way over trying to shoot down those units as the marauders and the marines getting in a free drop behind the main mineral line all right attacking at the front door happening as well a little bit of a two-prong push crank uh, able to push back multiple units the marines trying to shoot up onto the high ground able to get the colossus but a second colossus has joined in on the fight so far we are still fighting here as the marauders are focusing down even more and more workers perhaps they should be focusing down some zealots or some even some stalkers if they try and warp in stalkers have arrived there it looks as though this will be a wrap-up we are now all even in terms of supply 76 to 76 let's take a look at the losses though slightly higher for the protoss 800 resources but more importantly 14 worker difference between these two forces as this medevac cleans up another probe or two before escaping marines marauders continuing to add on to this force here crank getting five kills with that one oracle but needs to consider what his options are next alive looking to take up that third base you can see one medevac oh could end up getting shot down there yes it will get shot down no it does not as the observer as the phoenixes quickly catch up and finish off the rest of those units here all right are we gonna perhaps see more damage dealt yes but that's gonna be to those phoenixes instead the medevacs never so happy to see a handful of marines on the ground protecting them from any sort of attacks from those phoenixes currently three phoenixes in the air ready to go we are going into colossus there is now a 20 supply difference between these two armies vikings marines marauders all lined up poised to strike back their protoss opponent as crank is now looking at a 30 or excuse me 25 supply deficit going into this next fight upgrades are about even 1-1 one, one. we have not finished due to upgrades just yet for alive but alive not far away we can we'll be getting those upgrades in the next three minutes or so and i believe those upgrades will be making a very big difference anytime all of your units are effectively fighting better than what your opponents expect that is always bad news for them especially on top of that the zealots uh, will i believe be dealing what 16 15 14 damage per attack instead of 16 which is a bit of bad news for them vikings now trying to chase will be able to shoo back those phoenixes there as the phoenixes still doing pretty much a uh, roundabout fly play marines marauders holding that lower ground zel naga tower phoenix is in position gonna perhaps yeah just get an easy marine shot out of the sky and we are going to be looking at three bases to three but alive really the one taking advantage of this was mining this with quad mules at the at one point and his income must have been significantly higher than his opponent yes you can see less diminishing returns off of the three bases compared to two as crank just now gets up his third base Phoenix is still doing a bit of a fly around crank a bit all over the place but he does have phoenixes to try and absorb viking firepower the vikings will have to focus on to those colossus in order to protect the marines and i believe that's something that's easily done for a player of a lives caliber marauders and marines still wandering around over here does does spot an observer but doesn't want to reveal all too much and is he going to be able to shoot it down no he doesn't he retreats simply too far back here as we're now looking at the phoenixes doing just a little bit of scouting play vikings we are now up to 14 vikings in the air we are also going into sh what terrican terran vehicle and ship plating an additional plus one armor making it that much more effective against those phoenixes phoenixes only deal five damage um times two so if you can even get one point of armor or even two points of armor you reduce your amount of damage per attack by a total of four or per round of attack by a total of four as the vikings just getting completely completely uh, um, pummeled by those phoenixes but they don't care they want to take down colossus after colossus 
and now that the Colossus are gone, the Vikings pretty much have free range on that air superiority, and there is the GG Crank falling behind 2-0 in this series. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening.